Hello again. So this is going to be a talk on Hodgkin's lymphoma. And Hodgkin's lymphoma is just one of the many, many, many lymphomas that you may encounter in your practice. So lymphoma is a malignant proliferation of lymphocytes which collect in the lymphatic system and they usually form masses. And these masses may be detected by the patient or they may be detected by you. If they're detected by you or the patient, you will generally call this lymphadenopathy. And usually it's going to be a painless lymphadenopathy, and that's what separates it from those swollen lymph nodes you get when you've got mono or when you've got the flu or the cold or something. So a malignant proliferation of lymphocytes collecting in the lymphatic system. That's different from leukemia, which is also a malignant proliferation of lymphocytes as far as ALL and CLL. But in ALL and CLL, what you've got is a proliferation of lymphocytes that go into the bloodstream. So Hodgkin's lymphoma, as opposed to the other lymphomas, which we collectively call non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma is a specific form of lymphoma that's characterized on biopsy by the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells. Clinically, you cannot tell the difference between Hodgkin's lymphoma and the other non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. There are certain things that you may see clinically that might give you a hint, but you can't definitively tell the difference clinically between Hodgkin's lymphoma and NHL. So you have to have the biopsy in order to definitively diagnose that this is not only lymphoma, but it's Hodgkin's lymphoma. The stereotypical symptoms that you see in Hodgkin's lymphoma and really any of the lymphomas are painless lymphadenopathy, uh, and that painless is very key there. Uh, constitutional symptoms, and those include fever, unintended weight loss of greater than 10%, and night sweats, which collectively, these constitutional symptoms, we call them B symptoms. The incidence of Hodgkin's lymphoma is highest in the 20s and in the 60s, so this is a bimodal distribution. And the best initial step in the diagnosis of any lymphoma, which includes Hodgkin's lymphoma, is excisional lymph node biopsy. Note that you're taking the entire lymph node out. You're not doing a needle biopsy where you're just pulling some cells out. You're taking the whole node out. If you do a needle biopsy and you use that to try and diagnose Hodgkin's lymphoma or any lymphoma, and let's say that comes back negative, and then your patient winds up with grade 4 lymphoma, you're going to get sued for malpractice. So make sure that you know that this is an excisional lymph node biopsy that we do to diagnose lymphoma or to rule it out. Okay, so as mentioned, Hodgkin's lymphoma, the major symptoms are lymphadenopathy, painless lymphadenopathy, and the constitutional B symptoms. Now these are indeed characteristic of lymphoma, but they are nonspecific. So there are other possibilities that can give you lymphadenopathy uh, and constitutional symptoms like fever and sluggishness and, uh, and uh, weight loss. So, uh, for instance, mononucleosis. Usually mononucleosis is going to cause a more painful lymphadenopathy, but if the patient doesn't complain of swollen lymph nodes and you don't detect swollen, or sorry, if they don't complain of painful lymph nodes, and they don't complain of painful lymph nodes when you're pressing them, then you don't really know if it's mono or if it's lymphoma. So that's something to keep in mind. Usually in a T danger, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be mono. Uh, acute HIV syndrome, that occurs in the early part of the HIV infection as the patient uh, gets the HIV and then within about two weeks, they convert and there's an inflammatory reaction and what happens is they develop this lymphadenopathy uh, and these constitutional symptoms as the HIV proliferates. Uh, then after that, the immune system pulls down the HIV load. But during that acute phase, you do get a lymphadenopathy and constitutional symptoms. So always, 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 whenever you have a patient with lymphadenopathy and constitutional B symptoms, if uh, they, uh, even if you're going to do a lymph node biopsy, which 
is the most important test because lymphoma is the the most important acute disease we're looking for, you should always get an HIV test on patients that have those two symptoms together, and especially if they've got a history of unprotected sex or drug use. And then other solid tumors are important to look for as well, and that's going to be based, as far as questions, on the patient's history and their other symptoms. In lymphoma, in the workup, we always do a chest x-ray and uh, even abdominal imaging as part of the workup. So uh, that should always be done. So important tests that need to be done are CBC, chest x-ray, and an HIV test. Uh, but the most important test is the excisional lymph node biopsy. So Hodgkin's lymphoma, once you've diagnosed it, and you will have diagnosed this how, by excisional lymph node biopsy. The next step is to determine the extent of the disease because that's going to dictate how we're going to approach treatment. So this is going to be done as imaging and that can be done either by CT or by MRI. Remember that MRI is more accurate, but CT is cheaper and done more often. Uh, so you do this of the chest and the abdomen. When you're working up, you're only gonna get radiography or CT or MRI, usually an X-ray of the chest. But once you've diagnosed the patient, you're going to do the chest and the abdomen because we want to see how how much this lymphoma has spread. And a lot of times we can't never we can do that by just physical examination. We have to do radiography. So you need to do a CT and MRI of the chest and abdomen once you've diagnosed Hodgkin's lymphoma. And with this information, uh, then you can stage the disease. So staging lymphoma, how do we do this? Well, if the disease only affects one nodal site, then, so let's say it only affects the right cervical lymph nodes, then the patient has stage one lymphoma, uh, or in this case, stage one Hodgkin's lymphoma. And we do the same staging for Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's, so this is just staging lymphoma in general. If they've got uh, if they've got two nodal sites and they're on the same side of the diaphragm, then it's, uh, then it's going to be stage two. So one nodal site, stage one. Two nodal sites, assuming they're on the same side of the diaphragm, that's stage two. Now, if you have, uh, if you have affected sites that are on both sides of the diaphragm, then it's stage three, regardless of whether they're both on the left side or both on the right side. It doesn't matter. If you've got nodal sites that are affected on both sides of the diaphragm, then it's stage three. And if you have extra nodal sites affected, like the liver, the spleen, the bone marrow, then you've got stage four lymphoma. Now you may see that lymphomas are, are described as 1B or 3B or 2A. What that B stands for is the presence of B symptoms. So if the patient has B symptoms and they've got lymphoma at two nodal sites on the same side of the diaphragm, then their stage is lymphoma 2B, stage 2B. Okay, so Hodgkin's lymphoma, how do we treat? Well, stage one and stage two, so patients that have uh, no extra nodal involvement, and they've only got involvement at two or fewer sites on the same side of the diaphragm, these are candidates for radiation therapy. However, before you do the radiate, before you can go forth with the radiation therapy, you need to do a staging laparotomy. And the reason is because if we're just going to do radiation, which is much better on a person's body than than the toll of chemotherapy. If we're just going to do radiation, we have to make damn well sure that there's no other lymph lymphoma sites anywhere else. And so we look inside the abdominal cavity and we take biopsies to make sure that it's nowhere else. So we go in to the patient uh, laparoscopically. Um, well, I suppose they, they could do it uh, open too. Uh, I'm not a surgeon, obviously. <laughs> Uh, and they take, but first they take the entire spleen out because you don't need that. And then they take biopsies of multiple sites of the liver and then biopsies of aortic, mesenteric, portal, and splenic hyalur uh, nodes. If those all come back negative, then they can usually go through with radiation therapy. It's becoming more standard practice now, however, that a bone marrow biopsy is done as well. 
So if these both come back negative, then they can go on with radiation therapy. If any of these come back positive, however, for lymphoma, then they need to get chemotherapy because they've got involvement of extra nodal or uh, on both sides of the diaphragm. So that would instantly make them stage three or stage four. So if they come back positive for this, you're not really giving chemotherapy to a stage one or stage two because you're looking below the diaphragm. So then they would be stage three or stage four. So with stage three and stage four or uh, with a patient that's essentially been diagnosed with that because they've had a positive staging laparotomy or bone marrow biopsy, you're going to give them chemotherapy. And the regimen is ABVD. So the ABVD regimen is adriamycin, bleomycin, vincristine, and decarbazine. The USMLE loves to throw at, uh, at you, they're getting this, that, and the other side effects from these drugs. This particular side effect is most likely linked to which of the following drugs. They want you to know the side effect from the chemotherapy drugs. So adriamycin is uh, cardiomyopathy. Bleomycin is pulmonary fibrosis, vincristine is peripheral neuropathy, and decarbazine is myelosuppression. So those are the major, uh, those are the major side effects from each of these drugs. But ABVD is how we treat Hodgkin's lymphoma. The adverse prognosticating factors in Hodgkin's lymphoma is advanced age, uh, a higher stage elevated ESR, and the presence of B symptoms. Ultimately, the best therapy, uh, meaning the, the, the most effective therapy, but not the initial therapy, is a bone marrow transplant. But that's not the first therapy we go to. The first therapy we go to is going to be chemotherapy most of the time. And then the five-year survival is actually quite good. Stage one is a 90% five-year survival. Stage two is 84%. Stage three and four is 65%. So just reviewing Hodgkin's lymphoma from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the symptoms are the same, painless lymphadenopathy, night sweats, weight loss, fever. However, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, because it usually presents later, may have some other symptoms, but they all always have these typical symptoms. The incidence with Hodgkin's lymphoma overall is less common than non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, the age, Hodgkin's lymphoma, tends to present in the patient's 20s or 60s, whereas non-Hodgkin's tends to present later in life. It's more common as you get older. The areas found, Hodgkin's lymphoma is, uh, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma can be found anywhere, but particularly Hodgkin's lymphoma is found in the cervical lymph nodes. As far as diagnosis, it's the same for both of them. The best initial test is excisional biopsy. For treatment, we just talked about this, stage one or two can get radiation, but oftentimes they do have to get chemo. Stage three and four always have to get chemo, and the chemo regimen we use is ABVD, adriamycin, bleomycin, vincristine, and decarbazine. CNS involvement for Hodgkin's lymphoma is rare to nil, and the survival for Hodgkin's lymphoma is better overall than the survival for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And that's it.